back to my channel guys. We are out in creation itself for today's video, which I think is probably the most fitting since we're going to be talking about the creator today. So in this video, I already give you guys a teaser that the title of today's video is going to be about self-control. And then we're going to be talking about forgiveness, forgiveness to others and forgiveness to yourself, which is probably one of the hardest ones for people uh, to work through and to struggle through. And then we're going to be talking about God. So the last couple of videos that I've done have been talking about the Holy Spirit and then also Jesus Christ. And so today we're finishing off the Godhead with God himself, the Father, Abba. This one is an interesting video. I felt like it was going to be very all over the place because of the topics that he wants me to talk about. But I think that once we get through all the different topics, um, he will literally package it up in a nice, neat little package with a bow on top. And it's really his signature, which is why I wanted to be out in creation, because I think it's the it, it's such a good parable and example of his goodness and his love for us. We're in creation. We're also his creation as well. We are what he has decided to make. And so for us to be alive and be able to be here and experiencing life in his creation is absolutely amazing. Talking about being able to have a relationship with God the Father is self-control. So self-control and what I mean specifically by that and the way that God the Father talks about it in the Bible is taking command of what is in your wheelhouse of control. And so I wanted to give an infographic of what's actually considered what's in your control, what you actually have control of, and then what you clearly do not have control of. A lot of us struggle with just our daily lives because of this very specific parameter where if you don't understand what you do truly have control of and what you do not have control of, it becomes a stumbling block for a lot of us in our lives. All right, so I'll put up the infographic here so you guys can go through this list with me, but what's specifically in your control, what you do truly have control over, which means that you have every ability to be able to choose what you say, what you do. So first things is your actions. You have every, every ability to control your actions. You will never ever actually do something and uh, lose control. You actually do still have control. Even if you lose your temper, lose your anger, you're not losing anything. You're actually fully capable of your actions and your choices in that moment. So say you do end up doing something that really makes you ashamed or embarrassed because what you did was wrong. Typically, that's how people respond. If you do something wrong, you'll get even more angry. And then you'll try to self-justify your actions. But the thing is, you need to understand that your actions, your responses, Values and goals, boundaries, beliefs, choices, perspective that you decide to choose um, in any situation or circumstance, uh, what you decide to focus on, how you decide to spend your free time, and how you choose to engage, all of that is actually within your control. You do have an actual choice in those regards. The things that you do not have control over is the past, uh, your memories, regrets that this is stuff that's in the past you cannot change it so you have zero control you can't change it it's set in stone so you have no control over it you have no control over others feelings others thoughts others words others beliefs others behaviors others responses you have zero control over what another human being does we can get all upset and we can get angry and we can try to boister what we think is in our control but we really do not have any control another person that is totally their choice and sometimes that's also freeing to when you finally understand that that your actions and your choices are fully holistically on your shoulders if you're upset about something that's on you you can either choose to be upset or not to be upset that is your choice and then the same we want to give that respect to other human beings because they have every choice over how they decide to see a situation, how they decide to respond in a situation. That is all on them. And taking command of your real house of control, this was a huge one for me where it was kind of like a, a snap of finger. Once I realized what I actually do have control of, I was like, oh, so I can take control in certain situations based off of those key things that I do have control of. So I could actually not take control of a situation or take control of another person if I'm unhappy or dissatisfied with how things are going. 
I can choose how I decide to respond to it though. I can choose to set up boundaries. I can choose, um, you know, what I do with my time. I can remove myself from the situation if I'm that upset about it. Instead of getting mad and taking out my hate and my hardened heart on another human being, I can actually take accountability for how I am truly feeling in that situation or circumstance. And then I can actually have some self-control, which is one of the fruits of the spirit. And I know that we've already talked about this in another video, so I will link that here. So if you guys have questions about that, I've already talked about that. But you do actually have a choice. So a lot of people, when we get into situations, we get mad at God. We get really upset because we feel like we're so determined by our situation and our circumstances and how we're feeling in the moment that we feel like we're trapped. And we actually start to miss the blessings that God has for us in those moments. And the only way to actually get that sight back and to get that control back is to actually see what is truly going on. That God is actually blessing us in those moments that, you know, sometimes we can't see things through the way that God does. We can't third person out enough to be able to walk the way with Jesus to say, you know, we need to calm down. We need to be a little bit more patient here. We need to, you know, let's wait and see what's going to happen. It looks bad to our eyes, but when we don't have that self-control, when we do not have that fruit of the Spirit, it makes things way harder. We cannot actually connect with God if we do not have self-control. If you are not taking your own actions and your own thoughts a hold and accountable to what is going on, you're, you're missing the God aspect, the God perspective, because you're wrapped up in your own thinking, your own thoughts, your own ways, which we don't want to be wrapped up in our ways. We want to be right. We want to be right with God and going, you know, Yahweh, his way, his will, the way we want to find that. And it's really hard to find his perspective and his way when we're so blinded by our own literal crap. Um, we cannot see and we cannot hear him. And so the way to actually get closer to God in that is to find some self-control, which means maybe we need to take some accountability for the way that things are. Maybe the situation really is that detrimental because you actually do truly know that what you are doing or how you're doing it is actually indeed not the right way. Not saying that you're wrong, right? Because sometimes we don't want to shackle ourselves with more further slavery by really just miring ourselves in hell. The literal hell that we have that is available to us here is tying ourselves with those chains and saying that we're completely unforgivable for the things that we've done. And so that's why God wants me to then talk about after you have self-control and realizing that you are indeed in charge of your life. Like it is driven by God and he gives you several different choices. He gives us free will for a reason because he wants us to come to him of our own volition. He doesn't want a, uh, a slave for his people. He wants freed hearts for his people, for his chosen people. He wants people to come to him on their knees willingly. And a lot of us can't do that if we have zero self-control, if we're not if we're not taking accountability and integrity for our actions, our words, and, and our, our circumstances, situations, if we're not fully owning that, then we can trap ourselves in slavery and get us in our own literal hell where we're actually trapped by our self-sabotage. We're trapped by the inability to make any changes in our circumstances, but we'll be so upset and we'll know that's what's so interesting for a lot of human beings is that we get so upset because we know that we're not where we should be. We know that we're not doing what we should. And a lot of us actually even verbalize that out where we go, you know, I know that I shouldn't be doing this, but I do it anyway. And you need to understand that that right there is actually not a spirit of God. That's a spirit of rebelliousness. And so you need to recognize that that's actually where you are at. You're rebelling against God. And the only way to not rebel against God is to get on your knees and come to him with self-control. It takes a lot amount of self-control to step into this of going like, you know what? I, I'm going to admit and I'm going to go get repentance with our father, you know, and, and find the forgiveness. Because maybe we're trapping ourselves in our circumstances by our past because we have not forgiven ourselves. And so... I want to take us to some specific Bible verses that talk about self-control. We're going to go to Romans 
We're gonna go down the Romans path. So I'm gonna have an infographic here that takes us through the Romans path. And then I also wanna go to 2 Peter 1 and look at some verses there. So this is growing in faith is the way that this chapter is described in my Bible, but I just wanna go through it and kinda of give you guys a how you get there to get self-control. So by, by his divine power, God, so by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We literally have it right here, right now. So if you feel like you're not living a godly life, let me show you that he's already provided it. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So it's not that we're coming of our own volition. This is that we hear his call, that this is the way that we need to go. And so if you want to listen and then you want to actually act in faith and be disciplined, this is what he wants us to do. Because of his, his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patience endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. You have picked up your old nature, your sins that maybe you did forgive yourself at some point. Maybe you did truly repent and you forgave, but now something has come up and you are awash in your own crap again. And so, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those that God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go back up to how he leads us point by point what we need to do in order to gain the self-control and then stay in it. So he says to supplement your faith, which your faith is given to you by God. We've already discussed this with a generous provision of moral excellence. So what is moral excellence? What could that actually be meant? And that is actually just character. You need to have a good character. You need to have good morals. You need to know to do the right thing. You are born with a conscience. Um, another way that they put that in the Bible is that when you were born, when you were knit in your mother's womb, his, his word was written on your heart. Meaning you know what you should do and you know what you shouldn't do. And a lot of us like to have our excuses and all the reasons in the world that we're going to keep doing what we know that we ought not. But also, once again, in another part of the Bible, it says that if you know that you ought to do something and you don't, it's a sin. If you know that you should be doing something and you don't do it, you're sinning. If you know that you shouldn't do something and you do it anyway, you just sinned. And you just need to recognize that that's you not having a good character. It's nothing against you. It's just that you do need to make different choices now. You need to recognize that how you're living and what you're doing by your actions and your words. Sorry, you got to stop. You got to stop doing it. Because with that, when you come to your good character, when you start working on your character, you actually then come with knowledge. You're given wisdom from God. You're, you're told even more and more and more if you keep doing what you know that you should. So then with that knowledge, you then start to actually gain the self-control. You're able to actually take a hold of your mind, take a heart of your body, your actions, and start doing the things that you know that you ought to do. Then once you have that self-control, you then need to work on patient endurance. People and situations will come to be a stumbling block before you. And it's your choice, it's your self-control that's going to determine on whether you're going to stay on the path and keep going the way. If you've been made and new and you're doing things new and you're trying to be more kind and more loving, there's going to be situations that are come, going to come up and that are going to make you not want to be kind. They're going to make you want to get upset and angry and take it out on other people, take it out on the situation, maybe even take it out against yourself. But the thing is we need to be patient and we need to have the endurance to stay patient. And this is the thing that is always, I'm constantly working on this 
I just recently learned patience, was not very patient person before. Now it's, you've got to save face even in those situations and circumstances where things are getting your goat and you, you've got a choice to make. You can either go back to how you were doing things before and totally lose your crap and be mean to somebody or take it out on them or start blaming other things and Oh, you know, here, this is why my life is so horrible. This is why things are as bad as they are. See, and I can't do anything right. You start losing ground from all the, the advancement that you've made towards kindness and love towards yourself and towards other people. Having grace and mercy in those situations that you really do need to learn to have grace and mercy in those. But once you can have that patient endurance, it comes with godliness. If you can continue to be patient, you're right there, baby. You're right with God. You don't have to worry anymore. And as long as you keep coming to him and keep falling to your knees to him and doing it his way, you have nothing to worry about. Because then once you have that godliness, you have the brotherly affection. And brotherly affection is love for everyone. No matter your brother, sister, whatever, it doesn't matter. And a lot of people are struggling with this right now. Right now is the month of pride. Okay, and I, I don't really like the whole pride mentality that we have for the LGBT. I don't like the word pride because I feel like it falls far too in line with ego and Satan things. Things that are, are not of this, that are of this world and not the kingdom. But I like that they're focusing on we need to have love for everyone. No matter how they're deciding to live their life, even if it's so different from us, that does not mean that different is bad. Okay? We need to find love in our hearts and stop having such hardened hearts towards our own humankind. We've got to stop doing that. Because if you flip this back and you look at the inverse, if you don't have brotherly love, you don't have affection for everyone, okay? That means you're far from God. And then if you're far from God, you can't have patient endurance. And if you have no patient endurance, you have zero self-control, which means that you're not actually doing anything. You're just letting life happen to you. And because of that, you have no knowledge and no wisdom. So now you're deaf, dumb, and blind. And then without that, you have no character because you are not even awake. You're not even here. And so if you want to be active in your life, and to find like some, some goodness in your life, you gotta be with God. And the only way to do that is to have self-control. You've gotta learn to have that self-discipline to listen and do what you know you need to do and stop doing the rebellious thing where I'm gonna make a bunch of excuses and keep doing what I'm doing because why not? Everybody else does it. The thing is we all have a cross to bear and there's only so many of us that are actually actively doing that and living the Christ-like way and you need to. You need to start doing that. If you're not happy with the way that your life is, if you don't truly have joy and you're seeking God, this is the way, baby. So come on, come on this way. So now that we have a clear roadmap of Romans and how we do need to take accountability for our actions, we need to recognize that we are, we are full of sin, okay? And there's nothing that you can do about it. You need to just recognize that that is the way that it is and that you are no better than any other person because guess what? We all are on the equal playing field that this is every, everybody is dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. The issue at hand is how are you choosing to go about it? Are you choosing to do the right things or are you choosing to do the, uh, the indignation way? And we don't want to do that. We don't want to harden our hearts towards other people because that's what happens. We go, well, yeah, everybody else is out here acting like fools and... I want to do that, but now you look foolish. So if you're actually self-justifying or making excuses for the reasons why you're doing things, you should automatically realize that you're in the wrong here. You shouldn't be self-justifying any at all. Your actions should be justified by God. He is the one that actually justifies our actions. And the Holy Spirit that's within us, he convicts those that aren't doing the right thing. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're right with the Holy Spirit, that we're walking the way with Jesus, and then that way we can come to the Father. So our words and our thoughts and our actions, all of those things, when we look at those, our words, our thoughts, and our actions, that actually becomes our character. That's our identity. So if you feel like your, your character is being attacked, those are your words, your thoughts, and your actions. So if, if you don't feel like you're in the right, then you need to look at those things. You need to look at, am I saying the right things? Am I talking to people the right way? 
Um, am I doing things the right way? Am I, am I being kind and am I being humble or am I being ego pride and I'm being rude? You know, and then we need to look at our actions. Are we actually doing things in love? Are we actually looking at that we're doing loving intention towards others and especially towards ourselves? Because how we decide to treat ourselves is how we treat others and how we treat others is actually how we talk to ourselves. We got to remember that there's that equal sign there. Um, and if you guys haven't watched that video, I really recommend that. If this is a struggle for you of like, you know, how does that paradigm work? This, it's a really big paradigm and it's one that you really should have solidified. But with those things, we sometimes can have resentment build up. And if we're not saying and doing the right things, we can start to resent others or resent ourselves. We can start to get really just hardened heart, just resentment build up. You need to create a moment where when you're in a situation, if you're not liking the way that things are going and you want to give yourself that opportunity to actually choose better the next time. Because that's the biggest thing about this whole thing is you, you're not perfect, okay? So we're in creation ourselves and, and do the trees look perfect, okay? Does does the does the grass look perfect you know and then like let's look at me I'm a creation do I look perfect and do I act perfect no by no means is anything that he has created perfect the only thing that is perfect is God himself and that extends to our Lord Jesus Christ and also the Holy Spirit okay those are the only things that are perfect we should be trying to do better in every situation that we're involved in so that we can become like him. And that's the word is to become. We can't be him, but we want to try to en en enact him. So that way we can actually have good situations and conversations and interactions with other human beings. And especially towards ourselves too. How we decide to look at ourselves and treat others is how we're going to be judged later on. And so we want to just be mindful of that in every interaction that we're in because you never know that could be held against you later. And so if you're feeling any sort of way of like, I've messed up, then that means you need to repent and then we can get the forgiveness from God. So I want to talk about that next, forgiveness. I'm really good at forgiving others, but man, I was really harsh on myself. I had a really hard time forgiving myself because I just felt like I needed to be punished for everything that I have done. And I have a lot of people in my life that are constantly bringing up my past and how I used to be. A guilty is charged, your honor. Totally guilty. Put the shackles on me, take me away now. I'll take my sentence now. And the thing is, that's not how God works. That's how the world works. The world wants to keep those shackles on you so that you can't come to God. So that you're just so blinded by your mistakes that you can't see God's love for you. And so I want to help break those shackles and help you give some, give you some tools that you can use to actually have your, you come to the Father, to seek forgiveness from Him and truly be forgiven so that you can come to Him without fear. We, we should have fear of God, but that's more of awe and respect that He's made all of this and He's made us and He can literally take us out like that. And honestly, the time is coming where that, that will indeed happen. So we want to make sure that we're on the right side with him on that and not the other side where he comes and he says, I don't know you. We want to make sure that we're spending time with him, especially right now, because the time is, it's close at hand. So we want to make sure that we don't have any resentment so that we can actually seek forgiveness. So do you have resentment against somebody else? Do you have resentment against yourself? We need to work through that. You need to counsel your mind, which is your logic, and you need to check in with your heart, which is your feelings. And you need to counsel both. You shouldn't let one or the other take, take the lead. We need to take a hold of our thoughts. And if there's anything that's coming up where it's really just messing us up, we need to take control of our thoughts. We have every ability to do this. I did talk about this in another video. So if you have questions about that, I'll link that as well. But we need to take control of that and we need to give ourselves a moment to not choose what we've chose before and choose the new thing that we know that we ought to. We need to choose patience, we need to choose love, we need to choose kindness, we need to choose humbleness. We need to be more like God, okay? God is goodness itself and God made us in his image. So what that means about us, and after he even made us, he said it's good. 
So when he made us, he said that it's good. So if we're intentionally at the very beginning made to be good and God says that we're good, then we should just be good. It's, it really is that simple. I know for a lot of people it becomes such a struggle, but it's because we've put so many other limiting beliefs and other hoops to jump through. And the thing is, it's just not true. It really is literally right there, ripe for the taking of you're good, so just be good. And this one was a struggle for me too, of like, how can I take this idea of that I am indeed good, even though of my past and I've, I've seeked repentance and gained forgiveness for that but how could I solidify that I am now good and so for me I was like well you know God says that we're good what else does he say about me and so I'm going to put an infographic up of all the things that God says about us so who who does God say that you are after looking at this list do you agree with that do you agree that God says that that's what you are if you have any issues with anything on this list then you need to go to God about it if you feel like indeed I am not these things that he says that I am then you need to come to the father and you need to let him know hey God I don't agree with what you said about me and, and give him an opportunity to show you or give you an opportunity to seek forgiveness so that you can be what he says that you are. We wanna seek patience in order to choose good, positive, true, and honorable things. We need to give ourselves an opportunity to choose that. So the next time you get into a situation where you know in the past you would react rashly and upset and in anger and feel like, oh, well, I just lost control, I want you to take a breath in that moment. One to two breaths, that is all that it takes. Maybe even if you can't do that, leave the room. For just a moment, give yourself that break, that space so that you can choose right, so that you can start to establish that self-control, that discipline that you obviously really, really need, desperately need. Once you can start to do that, you can then start to choose your honest and authentic responses. What's really in your heart? What's really in your character? Who are you? And what would you like to choose to do right in the next situation? Once you can have that, you can freely and clearly come and find forgiveness from others and yourself. If you can start to have that patience and start seeking that forgiveness from others and truly bring it upon yourself, that means you're submitting, by the way. Submission to reduce I to increase him, okay? This is you being disciplined to what God wants you to do. This is you coming closer to God. It looks like a lot of other things, but it really is you submitting to the Father, submitting to His way, counseling with Him, what do you want me to do, listening, you know, what should I do in this situation, how should I talk to this person, submitting to His will, reducing you and your, how you're feeling, the I, reducing that and letting him increase to come into situations and you may just be a, a a stepping stone or a conduit to work through him for him you know he's working through you in those situations but that's really how you get to god the father where he is he's created all of this and he's created you he's created me but we get so wrapped up in the world itself that we forget about nature we forget about creation we forget about why we were even created and why we were put here to do his work and his will that he created us with a purpose in mind already but a lot of us get so blind to just doing what everybody else does to listening to the world and going and working a job and having kids and starting the life and then working for all that materialism and the consumerism and working for the next holiday and doing all the right things and well you mess up anyway and so then you get wrapped up in that and then next thing you know you're trapped as a slave to the world where you can't even hope to even try to do the right thing and the thing is I'm here to break those chains off of you and snap you awake and let you know that it's fully on you it is a choice that you make every day it is a choice that you make in every situation it's a choice you either need to choose god or are you going to choose yourself are you going to choose his way or are you going to choose the world there is only one choice here and you need to choose it every second of every day and you will mess up okay you cannot be perfect but the thing that i want you to take home at the end of this video is that it's all about you having that self-control. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying the next time. And then forgive yourself for not being able to do it perfectly. Okay? Forgive yourself and forgive others. And that way you can come to God the Father. Anything else that I'm missing?
you know it's beautiful yeah yeah all right so that's it for this video guys thanks so much for watching if you liked these videos go ahead and give this video a thumbs up let me know down in the comment section if you guys have anything else you'd like to add there is so much more that i would love to put into this but to be honest like if you have questions, if this is sparking interest for you, I really recommend to go to your Bible, start reading the Bible. That is his word. This is where I'm pulling all of this and I've just been doing a lot of Bible study with him and he's been he's been yelling in my ear to get this information out to you guys. Um, and I'm so happy to finally have this portion of the segment done because I'm really, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited about the next video that's coming out. And I just hope that you guys are ready and open for it because regardless if you are or not, it has to be done anyway because that's the way that God works. He doesn't work on our time or our schedule or what we want. He's been here since the beginning and he has a plan that has been set in, in, set in motion and whether you're on the bus or off the bus, it's going to continue on without you. I just want you to be able to come with me and go on this journey as well because that's... That's what I would prefer for everybody is to be in his kingdom and to be going his way. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember, I love every single one of you. I hope that you have a great day. Remember to spread kindness to yourself and to others. And I'll see you guys in my next video.